um, we also know, though, that he almost, or maybe he did, he caved a little bit when, uh, when things got to where, well, let's go back to the kind of being the law and, and kind of doing this and doing this because people are watching. Barnabas fell in for that too. So he had the please man nature, just like many of us struggle with, um, but he also had the boldness to oppose Paul and, and all this. Now, let's look at Titus. Titus he took also. Titus is a very interesting character. We're going to look at Titus chapter 1, verses 4 through 16. We're not going to read all those, but we'll, we'll do those. First of all, Titus's name means nurse. Now, I'm sure that got him picked on quite a bit. I don't know, maybe they had male nurses back then too. I don't know, but, but anyway, so Titus, the name means nurse. And the commentaries refer to him as gentle, but I'm not so sure that that was really true. Just this week, I just felt led to read the book of Titus, and I really hadn't put all my notes together for the message Sunday, and so I, read, I just read the entire book of Titus because it's only a few chapters. And, and basically, the book of Titus is Paul saying to Titus, hey, buddy, um, how many of y'all remember the talking G.I. Joes? John, did you have one? He pulled the thing out of his name. You, okay, this John, two Johns. How many Johns do we have here today? If we had John Mosier, we would have a full house. And uh, he's in Oklahoma, which is another reason that we should have, I should have mentioned him earlier. But anyways, ladies, there was a G.I. Joe, had real life hair, a lot like mine, only not so much gray. And you pulled this thing out of his neck. And what did he say, guys? I know, but what was the main thing he said? I've got a tough assignment for you. Isn't that? I've got a tough assignment for you. And it was really cool when he would stutter. I've got a tough, tough, you know, but I've got a tough, I think that's what Paul said to Titus. Dude, I have a tough assignment for you. So Titus, Titus apparently was, um, he was more of a nail puller than a wood chisel. He was like, dude, I need you to go in and I need you to straighten things out. So let's, let's read about, about Titus. Titus chapter 1, verse 4 through 16. <coughs> Excuse me. To Titus, <clears throat> my true son in our common faith. In other words, Titus was a direct result of Paul's ministry. Titus was in Christ because of what Paul was doing. Grace and peace from God our Father, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. The reason I left you in Crete was that you might put in order what was left unfinished and appoint elders in every town as I directed you. Okay, so he's got a job where he's going to be going around to different churches and he's going to help them establish this role of, of elder or, or um, um, yeah, an overseer. For there are many rebellious people full of meaningless talk and deception, especially those of the circumcision group. So they actually become, they had a nickname, the circumcision group. They must be silent because they are disputing uh, they are disrupting whole households by teaching things they ought not to teach, and that for the sake of dishonest gain. So they weren't just doing it because, well, we're just pretty sure that this is right. It was for selfish gain. Um, one of Crete's own prophets has said, um, had said, Cretans are always liars, evil, brutes, lazy gluttons. This saying is true, therefore rebuke them sharply so that they will be sound in the faith and will pay no attention to Jewish myths or to merely human commands of those who reject the truth. To the pure, all things are pure, but to the conscious, uh, are, but to those who are corrupted and do not believe, nothing is pure. In fact, both their minds and consciences are corrupt. They claim to know God but by their actions they deny him. They are detestable, disobedient, and unfit for doing anything good. <clears throat> now you see why I said, I've got a tough assignment for you. Um, Titus, look, I've left you here because there are some bad people and I want you to deal with them. I want you to get in their face. I want you to correct them. I want you to do a tough thing here. So Titus, while the name nurse, and I, you know, I would imagine nurses do some pretty tough things. Have you ever had to just tie somebody to their bed? Okay, there you go. I mean, nurses have to do some pretty tough things. I remember um, as, as a young man, I went to the doctor. I was ill. I guess it was one of those other times in my life I was ill. And that was the day I stopped wearing green shirts because the, the doctor told me, the nurse told me it made me look really, really sick 
wearing the green shirt. But I was, back then, you know, there was a certain place you got a shot um, that we don't really do that a whole lot anymore, and um, at least I don't. And I, I literally remember this nurse slapping me on my backside and saying, you need to relax, which didn't work. <laughs> By the way, that did not work. So nurses do tough things. Titus, is the, that's the reason I said they're kind of mismatched bookends. They both could accomplish some of the same things. They were both great guys. They had a lot in common, but they also had some differences. Guess what? In the body of Christ, it's okay to be different. It's okay to have different callings. It's okay to have different skills and different abilities and different passions. That is okay. If you're one of those people who, I want everybody to think like I do and be like I do and behave like I do and have my giftings, it would be boring. It, we would not get as much accomplished if everybody was like you. And you wouldn't even like it eventually. You would get tired of it yourself. So, so he said all this stuff in, in the book of Titus. This gives us a, a really good glimpse into uh, what Titus was like, the, um, not exactly the, the son of encouragement type, but more of the son of setting things straight type. And he must have been uh, a spiritual child of, of Paul and had a powerful relationship. So why did he take them? Well, in Acts 9, we find that Barm is coming and stands with Paul shortly after his conversion. Um, so he had a great reputation. He also had sold that piece of property, which had given him uh, kind of a, a, an opportunity to kind of be recognized. Oh, yeah, you know, you've, uh, when you're generous, when you serve somebody, when you do something for somebody, they use you a lot, lot more um, likely to listen to you when you come back. Just a, just a word of, of thing. But then Titus, the other side of that bookend, um, he is, he's exhibit A. He's not circumcised, but he is godly. He is a follower of Christ. He has been transformed by the word of God. He's been transformed by the gospel, but he's not circumcised. So he is exhibit A. So I'm going to take Barnabas, who you guys already know, and I'm going to bring Titus. I'm going to introduce Titus to you, who you're going to get to know, but he's exhibit A. He's, you don't have to be circumcised to be right with God. You don't have to have this physical thing done because that's not why Jesus came. Jesus came and did all the physical stuff that ever needs to be done. He came and did all the spiritual stuff that ever needs to be done. He suffered, he, he agonized, he paid the debt. And remember, we talked a few weeks ago, he didn't die for you, he died as you. And he doesn't have all of your sin in his back pocket in case you'd like to visit it or have any of it back. He destroyed it. He separated it as far as the east is from the west. It's no longer there for you to go and grab. It is gone. So this is why Paul, talking to the church of Galatia, is saying, look, there was a time that I went to Jerusalem and we talked about this very thing, this circumcision thing, and I took this guy Titus with me who was a perfect example of the fact you don't have to do anything other than believe and confess, and so that's what he did. So, why did he take the trip to Jerusalem? He's explaining this to people, uh, we, but I want us to look at Acts chapter 15, and we're just going to skim this. Um, Acts chapter 15, verses 1. Certain people came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the believers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. This brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them. So Paul and Barnabas were appointed, along with some of the other believers, to go up to Jerusalem to see the apostles and elders about this question. We, we call this the Jerusalem Council. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and elders to whom they reported everything God had done through them. Verse 5, then some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, the Gentiles must be circumcised and required to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders met to consider this question. Now, we've got a couple of groups of people here. Just let me, let me try to, there are certain people came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching believers unless you're circumcised. So that we've got this group. They, they clash with Paul and Barnabas. Paul and Barnabas decide, you know what, we're going to go to Jerusalem. We're going to meet with the apostles. We're going to meet with the church leaders, and we're going we're gonna to get this straight. And so that's a second group. So I don't, I don't think group number one and the group that 
and Jerusalem are necessarily the same group of people. I think especially when we realize that group number one, remember, they're the ones who are, they're, they're trying for financial gain. They're trying to get into the church. We see that they're coming in as spies. They're coming in to put people back in slavery. How many of y'all want to be enslaved? We don't want to be enslaved. That's what Christ has taken us out of, but these people were putting them back in. So then when we get here and we see that the apostles and elders met to consider this and that there were some of the Pharisees that stood up, we know that most of the Pharisees, you know, they, they, weren't, they weren't Jesus followers, but some of them, some of them apparently had become. They're, they're being recognized by the council, and they say, look, there has to, you have to be circumcised. That's just the way it is. We're Jews. That's what we do, and this, is, this has got to happen. But the elders, the apostles, they met and considered this question. Verse 7, after much discussion, Peter got up and addressed them. Brothers, you know that some time ago God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message of the gospel and believe. God, who knows the heart, showed that he accepted them by giving the Holy Spirit to them just as he did to us. If God has given them the Holy Spirit and it's okay with God that they're not circumcised, shouldn't it be okay with you guys? Well, no, we think that God missed that one. We're gonna, we, we think that God should have, should have, re, he should have re-examined this whole thing. I don't, God, maybe you got God when he was napping or something like that. And I, I remember, you know, most kids know if you want to ask your mom something, wait till she's like drifting off to sleep and, and she'll just say something that sounds like yes and then, you know, you'll be covered. But that's not what happened. He did not discriminate between us and them for he purified their hearts by faith. Now then, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of Gentiles a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors have been able to bear? Look, you're not, you're not messing with the non-circumcised Christians. You're messing with God. You're going against God. You're putting something on God and God's saying, no, I, no, don't. Uh, I, we... <laughs> How many times have we heard somebody blame God or give God credit for something? And you know God sitting up in heaven going, I, I had nothing to do with it. It was not my decision. That was your decision. Don't blame, don't, don't get me in the middle of this. You did that yourself. Well, why did God, God's saying, I'm sitting right here. I didn't have anything to do. They're trying to put this on God. And, and Paul is saying, you can't, you can't put this on God. Now then, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of the Gentile a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors have been able to bear? What are they talking about? All those guys were circumcised. Circumcision was keeping the law. And the Bible says that if we try to keep one part of the law, then we're guilty of all the parts of the law that we don't keep. Well, I like to pick and choose though, don't you? You know, I, I'm a, I have no problem doing this, and I have no problem not doing that. So let's just circle those and say that's what real Christianity looks like. The things that I don't happen to struggle with, the things that I do happen to struggle with, we're going to make that be the standard. Christ said, no, no, I'm the standard, and you can't reach it. So I'm going to come down and bring you to my level. And when I bring you to my level, you need to let go of all the things that you're so proud of. Well, look at me. I got circumcised when I was eight days old. Okay, maybe I had nothing to do with that. But I'd still, I'm better than everybody else because of something I had nothing to do with. We have nothing to do with salvation except to take it. So that's Paul's point. So as he's, as he's talking, verse 11, No, we believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus that we are saved just as they are. It's almost like Paul is saying, well, guys, I, I, I want to refresh your course. Uh, it's been a while since we've, we've been here. And when I left, the gospel was that we are saved by faith through grace. I, and, and I'm just wondering, did I... Did I did I miss, did we send out a, a, a memo since then saying, well, yeah, it's this, and then it's also circumcision. He's reminding them, we've already been through this. Christ 
is our salvation, period. We don't add to it. We don't take away from it. 